SpaceX's 28th resupply mission to the International Space Station lifted off Monday from the Kennedy Space Center, carrying new solar arrays, fresh food, and experiments to sustain research and upgrade the power system on the orbiting laboratory. Liftoff of the cargo driving spacecraft aboard a Falcon 9 rocket occurred at 11.47 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 15.47 UTC, from Pad 39A at Kennedy, a day later than planned after SpaceX scrubbed a launch attempt Sunday due to high winds in the booster's offshore recovery zone. The delay from Sunday eliminated a chance for a launch doubleheader on Florida's Space Coast. Another Falcon 9 rocket took off from a different launch pad earlier Sunday at nearby Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. The cargo driving spacecraft headed into orbit on an 18-hour chase of the orbiting research outpost with more than 7,200 pounds of hardware, provisions, and scientific experiments, including two new rollout solar arrays to upgrade the lab's power system. SpaceX flies unpiloted cargo missions to the space station under a commercial resupply services contract with NASA. This mission, called CRS-28, is the fourth flight of this cargo dragon spacecraft, designated C-208. SpaceX has three Cargo Dragon capsules in its inventory and four human-rated Crew Dragon vehicles with a fifth Crew Dragon in production. SpaceX says it aims to fly each vehicle as many as 15 times and the existing fleet, along with a new Crew Dragon in manufacturing now, will be sufficient to meet the customer demand for resupply and astronaut flights, primarily to the international space. The delivery of the next set of ISS rollout solar arrays or IROSA units continues a years-long midlife space station upgrade. The two solar array wings are rolled up on spools to fit inside the 13-foot, 4-meter diameter of the Dragon spacecraft's rear cargo bay. Later this month, astronauts Steve Bowen and Woody Hober will head outside the space station for two spacewalks to install and assist in the deployment of the two rollout solar arrays. NASA has sent four rollout solar arrays to the space station on SpaceX resupply missions in June 2021 and November 2022. We're very excited to have this third of four sets of arrays, and we're looking forward to having those installed, said Dina Contella, NASA's Operations Integration Manager for the International Space Station. The reusable first stage of the Falcon 9 landed on a SpaceX drone ship floating in the Atlantic Ocean. The CRS-28 mission marked the fifth flight for the reusable Falcon 9 booster stage, numbered B-1077. SpaceX rolled the Falcon 9 rocket to the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center on Thursday to begin loading time-sensitive research hardware, fresh vegetables and fruit and cheeses for the space station's seven-person crew. The rest of the more than 3.5 tons of cargo was installed into the spacecraft at a nearby payload processing facility. The space station's Canadian-built robotic arm will reach into the Dragon spacecraft's unpressurized trunk to extract the two rollout solar arrays and mount them on the station's football field-long power truss. Then Bowen and Hobart will head outside the station June 9 and June 15 for spacewalks to install and unroll the new solar arrays. Meanwhile, astronauts inside the station will unpack cargo stowed inside Dragon's pressurized compartment. The supplies include food, clothing, experiments, and other hardware for the orbiting research outpost and its seven-person crew. The CRS-28 cargo mission is hauling 7,284 pounds, 3,304 kilograms, of payloads to the station, primarily hardware for upgrades and space station maintenance, along with crew supplies. The station crew members will receive fresh apples, blueberries, grapefruits, oranges, tomatoes, and various cheeses, according to Phil Dempsey, NASA's Transportation Integration Manager for the Space Station Program. The Carva Dragon spacecraft will deliver equipment to maintain the space station's urine processing system, which recovers and treats fluid from urine and converts it to drinking water for the space station crew. The scientific payloads aboard SpaceX's CRS-28 mission include six CubeSats that will be unpacked by astronauts and transferred through an airlock in the Japanese lab module for release into orbit with a robotic arm. Five of the CubeSats were developed by university students in Canada. Those missions, sponsored by the Canadian Space Agency, are primarily educational in nature, giving students experience with satellite manufacturing and operations. The CubeSats carry instruments to monitor the melting of Arctic ice, collect data on space radiation, test a virtual reality camera in space, observe dust storms in Earth's atmosphere, and study how exposure to the extreme environment of space affects materials similar to the surfaces of the moon and asteroids. Another CubeSat mission called Moonlighter will serve as a test bit in orbit to test defenses against cyber threats. The spacecraft is about the size of loaf of bread, and once deployed from the space station, it will be part of an annual challenge where cybersecurity experts will attempt to hack the satellite. 
The Moonlighter mission, billed as the world's first hacking sandbox in space, is a joint effort between Aerospace Corp., the Air Force Research Laboratory, the Space Force's Space Systems Command. We wanted to build something new from the ground up to fill gaps in cyber activities in space, where the vehicles to do cybersecurity testing in orbit have not existed, said Aaron Myrick, Moonlighter project leader for aerospace. When we say it's a sandbox, Moonlighter is like a playground where we provide the space and the tools for professional hackers to perform cyber exercises and test out new technology. We hope this will lead to more cyber-resilient architectures for future space missions. Other research investigations aboard SpaceX's CRS-28 mission will evaluate plant biology and growth in microgravity and the effects of spaceflight on genetics. A Ganesh experiment will try to observe and study lightning flashes the bolt out of the tops of thunderstorms. But the new rollout solar arrays, or IROSAs, are the top priority of the CRS-28 mission. The solar arrays were built by Redwire under contract with Boeing, which oversees space station maintenance work for NASA. The pair of solar arrays launching on the CRS-28 cargo mission are the final set NASA has purchased, but Contella said Thursday the agency has plans in place to try and build a fourth set of arrays if funding levels permit. The IROSA arrays are being extended over the station's eight existing solar array wings, canted at angles to partially cover the older solar panels. Fully deploy the rollout solar arrays each stretch 63 feet long and 20 feet wide, 19 by 6 meters, uh, half the length and half the width of the station's original solar arrays. Despite their smaller size, each of the new arrays can generate about the same amount of electricity as each of the original solar wings. A mounting bracket plugs the new arrays into the station's power channels and rotary joints, which keep the solar wings pointed at the sun as the spacecraft races around Earth at more than 17,000 miles per hour. The International Space Station has eight power channels, each fed with electrical power generated from one solar array wing extending from the station's truss backbone. The original solar panels launched on four space shuttle missions from 2000 to 2009. As expected, the solar panel efficiency has degraded over time. NASA wants to reverse that trend to keep the space station productive through the rest of the 2020s until the lab's anticipated retirement in 2030. A commercial company, Axiom Space, also plans to launch a commercial module to attach to the space station in 2025, which will come with its own power demands. This is expected and normal part of aging, so our ability to augment that power is really important to us, especially as we want to continue research and eventually we'll also be incorporating the Axiom modules into the ISS, so we need to have as much power as possible, Contella said. One of the new arrays set for launch this weekend will cover one of the original space station's solar panels that was damaged by an impact from a small piece of space junk or a micrometeoroid last year, Contella said. The new pair of arrays will be installed on the starboard side of the space station's power truss, one on the very end of the truss, and another on an inboard section. Once the spacewalking astronauts attach the solar arrays, it will disconnect bolts to allow the arrays to unspool. They were wrapped up for launch using stored energy, meaning they don't need a deployment mechanism to drive them out to their fully extended length. With the current set of six IROSA units installed, the IS power system will be capable of generating 215 kilowatts of electricity, according to NASA. Overall, the ability to continue to bring our power up to normal levels and even boost it a little higher for future research is really critical for the space station, Contella said. So, what are your thoughts on the SpaceX launch sending upgraded solar arrays to International Space Station? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.